Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, my name is Prudence. Others may know me as Nontanta. Um, yeah, if you are new to this channel, welcome. Please do consider subscribing because I love having you here. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you so much for the support. I really, really, really appreciate it. So, I'm recording in the car and it's like very, very hot in here. Um, but there's just situation ships um so i'm just working with what i have which is why we are here um with my iced coffee featuring my iced coffee all right so this week's video it's story time hey i've always wanted to make a story time. i have made a story time but i've never like made it a title that it's story time you know but um Somebody commented on my previous video that they would like me to share my experience um, with au pairing and what happened for me to go into like the many rematches that I've been in. So I'll just put the comment here and yeah. So let's just jump right into it, right? <clears throat> so when I left South Africa, ne, um, that was May uh, 2019. I was very excited, very optimistic. I was going to a family in Maryland. Um, I'm not gonna mention family, the name or anything, or the area. I'm just gonna say the state, okay? Because now we don't we don't want to do that. So yeah, I was going to Maryland. Actually, it was like a border between Maryland and Washington. Like I was literally on the border of Maryland and Washington D.C. Like I would just cross the street and then I was already in D.C. So yeah. But anywho. Um, so the family uh, was taking care of one child and she was eight years old when I arrived. It was, um, so it was, okay, I'm just going to be honest. I'm going to be honest in this story time now. And this is my perspective. Maybe the families might have a different perspective of events. So I'm just sharing my experience. Okay? So when I got to the training school in New York, that's what we used to have before COVID. <laughs> um when i got to training school it was nice um everything was great so i haven't had any heard anything from my host mom so it was a single mom né? i haven't had anything from heard anything from her like from me getting on my flight coming uh going to america like she she didn't say anything i think if i remember correctly i didn't hear anything from her no whatsapp message nothing né? and it had been like a week or something you know but i didn't think too much of it né? and when i got to training school like i meet other girls other au pairs it's nice i remember my the one girl that i met we're actually now friends <laughs> she was like talking about yeah me and my host mama talking every day we do this we do that you know she showed me their chats yeah she was like oh the best on your flight safe flight what what and i'm like hey man, my host mom hasn't said anything does that mean there's something wrong you know like i got worried because I thought, hey, what if what if this person doesn't even exist? What if I'm going... Like, you know, when you're in a new place, especially like traveling abroad, it's a little bit scary, right? Okay, fine. But anyway, I told the office and the office called her and she was like, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry, Prudence. Things have been hectic, what, 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 okay? But for me, that was kind of like a first red flag. But I didn't think too much about it. But later on, I thought about it and I was like, hmm, I should have seen that this was like a little bit of a red flag. Because for me, it was like, I mean, you couldn't even just check if I landed safe, you know, because they know when you're coming, right? But anyway, it's fine. After training school, um, they, she came, picked me up. It was nice. We went to the house. Um, the, we, we had ice cream the first time. Um, it was very nice, ne? Um, But, so I was overlapping with their current au pair, ne? Because she was leaving, going back to Colombia. But I realized that... Their relationship was kind of not so good. 
And um, when we were doing interviews when I was back here in South Africa, she gave me the contact of like, because I asked to speak to their previous au pair just to hear what kind of uh, relationship they have and what kind of people they are. She didn't give me the current au pair's phone number. She gave me their old, old au pair's number, which was this au pair took care of their child when she was four years old and she was eight years old now. So for me, it was like a red flag that why, if you have an au pair here living with you, you didn't let me speak to her and you let me speak to somebody who's like in Brazil who just watched your kid like four years ago. It kind of didn't make sense. It was like a red flag nyana for me. Ne? But I didn't think too much about it. I was like, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, then Shabu, we overlapped with the girl and she, um, I'm not going to say her name. We actually became very good friends because every time I had questions, I would ask her and all of those kind of things. Yeah, but so it happened that um, after she left, things kind of started to change a bit, you know. So my host mom would make very hurtful comments. Like my ex-host mom would make very hurtful comments. Like comments that, you know, you would sit and be like, what, what did I do? So I asked the previous girl about it. Like, hey, have you noticed this and this? And she's like, yeah, I have. But she didn't want to tell me a lot. She's like, no, don't mind it. What, 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 what? And then she just leaves it like that. Ne? Okay, fine. Let me make an example of the hurtful comments. Ne? So the one time we were driving and my host kid, who's eight years old, was like, mommy, when are you going to let me? So when I got to America, I was like fully starting to experience like using makeup and all of that. Ne? When I left, I was not that good. Ne? I mean, I don't think I'm good even now. But I was very terrible when I arrived. So obviously when I started, I didn't want to go straight up buying expensive makeup when I don't even know how to use makeup. So I was buying like Wet n Wild, which I feel like there's nothing wrong with Wet n Wild. Like it still does the job, you know. So I bought, I was buying a lot of Wet n Wild products and all of that. Um, so I had makeup on and we were driving. I can't remember where we were driving to. And my host could ask a question like, mommy, when are you going to let me put makeup? I saw Prudence put makeup. And, you know, I felt like that would have been answered very, like, my host mom could have just said, ah, oh, not now or whenever, you know. But my host mom full-blown went and said, whenever you can afford it. I don't want you to be putting cheap stuff like Prudence and them, all these wet and wild. You need good quality makeup. It was very hurtful because I'm like, ouch, why would you say that? Like, you could have answered it in a different way, ne? I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but she said something about cheap makeup of prudence in them yeah it hurt my feelings you know okay i kept quiet i didn't say much about it and then another event that took place that she said like a, a hurtful comment ish um was when oh so my host kid's birthday was coming up and i was excited i actually planned the birthday it was a theme it was very nice my friend was helping me out it was very cute and everything yeah? like it was a movie theme you know it was very nice and then like we were talking and I'm like, oh my goodness, I don't know how to get, I'm just going to call her B. Her name is B, my host kid. I don't want to say her name on camera. But I was like, I don't know how, what to get B um, for her birthday. Do you have any ideas? Because I just arrived and I don't know how that well. What, would, what do you think she'd like? And she's like, I think ever since you've came here, you realize that my kid has everything that she needs. So you don't need to buy her a gift. And my man, I was like, I'm not buying her a gift because I feel like she's lacking. I'm buying her a gift to be nice you know and because it's her birthday so guys the hurtful comments continued 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 and like it was she would make it even on small things you know i'm not saying that i'm easily hurt but then there's certain things like i would just stop and be like why would she say that you know and then at the same time um my host kid it was she was nice she was a nice kid and all of that but then she had a lot of tantrums and getting mad and screaming which i didn't have a problem with because kids are kids kids do that but then there was a point where i had to call her mom because now she was starting to like hit me you know she was mad and she's like Get! like she just pushed me and then i called and i was like hey can you please um help me out here i don't know what to do i to explain her to her the situation and she's like okay i'm on my way i'm coming back right and when she came back 
uh, my host kid was downstairs, né? and I was like in the kitchen. Like she was in the basement watching something after the whole thingy between me and her. I just told her, okay, I, can you please go take a minute? And then she went to watch TV in the basement and I was in the kitchen. So she was downstairs and I was upstairs kind of. Um, and then when my host mom came in, she was like, hey, what's going on? And, oh, no, she's like, hey, where's B? And I was like, I was mad. I was still mad. Né? And I was like, I don't know. Actually, I knew, but then it was just me trying to show her that, oh my goodness, I don't know how to deal with this. Because it was not the first time I had to call her and ask her, like, what should I do? And every time these events would happen, I remember the first time she gave me a book and said I should read on how eight-year-olds act. And I'm like, I know how eight-year-olds act, but I want you to tell me how do I deal with the situation with your child? Because kids are different and parents parent differently. So what I needed was her to tell me that, oh, when she does this, give her a minute or do this or do that or do that, right? Or call me, let me talk to her or something, you know, um, take her tablet for a couple of minutes until she calms down, like something, ne? So she just gave me a book. And for me, it was like, wait, what? Are you going to tell me to read on something when I'm genuinely, like, when I genuinely do not know what to do? So, okay, fine. It, it ended up not working out for me. I called my LCC and I was like, you know what? This is not working. Because um, the hurtful comments kept going on. Even though I did talk to her, I sat her down and, and I spoke to her about it. Oh, and then she got offended because I said to my host kid, who was eight years old, yeah? that a B okay so she did something like she had those episodes of hers of getting angry and then pushing me and doing those kind of things and then I told her to take a minute to go to go upstairs né? and I went to to my room and then later on um she she apologized because I called her mom and then after I called her mom when she realized that her mom was like close to coming back home then she came in and said oh prudent I'm sorry and all of that né? I told her I'm like I forgive you but you need to understand something you cannot keep saying you're sorry and repeating the same thing over and over and over and over when you say you're sorry for doing like us for pushing me and screaming at me then don't do it again the next time so that's what I told her then when the mom came back we all three sat down and spoke about this and all of that and then the 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 daughter said, uh, Mommy, I don't understand what prudence means when she says, I cannot say I'm sorry and then come back and do the same thing again. You know, I felt like that was the moment for the mom to be like, oh, baby, the, because of A, B, C, D and E. Because I feel like as people, as grownups, we are grooming children to be grownups one day, like to to take accountability for their actions. Right. I'm not saying beat them up or anything like that. No. But then to make them understand like certain things in life right so i thought it was a teachable moment but the mom was like i also don't know what she means baby and then i was like wait what did she just say <laughs> then later on she came to me and she's like you cannot treat my child like she's an adult she's a child she's allowed to do all these things so you know what for me that was like okay i'm done like I, this is a breaking point for me because i feel like we cannot agree and when kids realize that adults are not agreeing in the same house then it, en it ends up being a mess because now they take advantage knowing that they can't agree to one thing to help me, you know? So that's when, like, we got into a rematch. Um, yeah, and then we got into a rematch. We tried to sit down with the LCC. It didn't work out. And, yeah, we both felt like she thought I was immature. I, um, she thought I was immature and I did not know how to deal with older kids, right? And it was her opinion, really, you know? um evaluating it now um i would say she was right uh because later on um in like my au pair year i actually came to the realization that you know what i prefer taking care of small kids than older kids because because it's i don't know for me it doesn't make sense to be bickering with a child like yeah yeah you know so for me i was like you know what i don't do good with all the kids and i accepted that and that's why i opted for like two-year-olds uh four-year-olds and all of that yeah 
so but that was a, a realization of later right anyway i got into a rematch um i left maryland got a family in texas um i was going to take care of two girls right so i got to texas it was fine <laughs> i only stayed with that family for four weeks a month and then i was already in another rematch <laughs> so okay fine i got to this family it was fine it was nice uh, no it actually was not nice um it was very awkward like okay i i got along with the kids i thought and my host's mom not quite my host dad yeah it was okay um so i got there um Guys, I, I, I would even be lying to you if I tell you what exactly happened in Texas because I'm still confused at like even today of what happened in Texas. But anyway, here's the thing. I got to Texas, so they required me to drive. Né? Drove the first time with them and they felt like my driving was terrible. What, 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 what? So they told me to practice my driving every day before I can take the kids to school. So I started practicing and they were comfortable with me going taking the kids to school started taking the kids to school fine but my host mom was still not happy with my driving Mara she let me go with her kids every day but let's not talk about that okay fine maybe okay fine yeah sharp. she let me take her kids to school Mara she felt like my driving was terrible and I felt like well girl if you feel like my driving was so terrible don't let me take your kids aren't you scared they're gonna die but uh -huh. anywho so when I got there, so the host families are responsible for giving you like a SIM card or um, a phone. I didn't want any host kid, uh, any host family's phone. I wanted to use my own phone. So they would give me like a SIM card, right? They would give me like a SIM card. So when I got to that family, so the first family, they, they gave me a phone and a SIM card, but I opted to just use the SIM card and not the phone. Then me, me, when I got to this family, the host mom takes me to... AT&T and when I get there I thought we are buying a sim card and then Ukul is like okay you're gonna pay for it so mind you um it is a sim like you pay okay I'm sorry about that my battery is like low and it just went off um but yeah you guys so I got there we went to the AT&T and I thought we we're getting a sim card like regularly like I would with all my other family and my host mom was like oh you paying for it um I was like oh okay not a problem i just paid at that moment but i was not sure what's going on right fine um and then i had to do my state license and she was like yeah you're gonna pay for that and then for me it didn't make sense because usually the host families are the ones that pay for that right so i told my lcc i was like i don't know what's going on um i'm paying i'm supposed to be paying my phone every month um sixty dollars and now my husband wants me to pay for my state license too and then my lcc was like no i'm gonna talk to her um you're not supposed to be doing that right um first of all probably you guys are like well why because you're using it because to talk with my family i just need the wi-fi because i'm using like whatsapp or even facebook i just need wi-fi sim card is for the family um for them to call me when i'm out with the kids you know so I don't really need to have it it's basically it's for child related things because i can still communicate with my family back home with just the wi-fi right and that is what the lcc said that you don't really need to have a sim card you're doing it because of the safety of her children right so fine my sister called her and spoke to her about that and she's like no but then all my other au pairs paid for their own so why is this going to be different with her right and i told my sister it's like it's fine i'll pay no then fine, the license thing came. And then she was like, no, you have to pay for it. All my other uh, au pairs had paid for their licenses. And then I was like, no, let's talk to the LCC. Because I don't have to drive. I'm driving because I have to take your kids to school, drop them off at the bus stop, what, 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 what. So I don't have to do it. I'm doing it because it's required. So my LCC again said to her, no, you have to pay for it. Because Prudence doesn't really need to drive, you know. She's doing it because it's childcare related. You have to cover it. She didn't like that. She did not like that at all. Um, 
and I, I she was like no why does it seem like you're here for the money and i'm like but i'm not here for the money these are the things that are child related that other families are doing for their au pairs you know so yeah that was the first issue the second thing is even with this family i didn't talk to their current au pair who also lasted a month just like me oh she lasted five weeks which was like a month and one week like me i didn't get to talk to her because she was like no it's bad what 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 ne? okay fine then i feel like the last straw was when we went to this nice festival um and it was very nice ne? but the thing is when we got there so guys i was very very new with these people like it was only my third week when we went to this festival and when we got there it was a bit cold and my host dad is like oh i'm gonna get hot chocolate for the girls ne? the two girls and i was like oh okay fine and then he goes and get hot chocolate the girls are drinking hot chocolate and then he goes and says oh no no and then he comes back with drinks for him and the wife and then nothing for me and i was like oh okay what's going on so where i come from when you're going to buy something you offer people you're like hey so we're going to get this do you want some you know so she didn't, he didn't say anything so for me it was like okay what is going on right i'm not very familiar with the facility i could have went and bought for myself but i'm not familiar with what is going on there right um the whole thing was just very awkward like and then you know it was only at lunch time that they bought for everybody but like i just felt out of place and i just felt like i was like disturbing them like i was an extra person and they just wanted to go out as a family you know so anyway when i got home i was like no let me address this i asked them i was like guys can i please talk to you because i didn't want to like keep it inside and then just you know cry about it in my room so i was like guys can i please talk to you um and i was like um today i felt a little bit out of place because of a b c d and e and then um the host dad was like oh i'm so sorry prudence it's my fault i i like she's like i'm so sorry it is my fault because i should have offered because we, we are two like we're people that come from different backgrounds so you don't know how we do things but with our previous au pairs they would just ask so I thought you were going to ask when you wanted something. And I was like, oh, no. But next time I will ask because now you're telling me to ask. But I thought you would offer because where I come from, we offer. So I thought we were cool. We cleared that. Hey, guys, my host mom was not having it. She was like, you're so ungrateful. You're so ungrateful. You know how expensive that event was. We paid for that. And all you're going to tell us is how you felt uncomfortable. Bruh. I was like, I'm... I'm like i don't know what to know what to say and it was just the big thing of how i'm so ungrateful and the husband is like no calm down she just didn't know how we do things she's still new and from that day on guys <clears throat> there was nothing right that i'm doing okay nothing right that i'm doing if i try to have a conversation with the kids my host mom would jump in and just chow my head off like it was just very bad and then i remember the monday the weekend i wanted to tell them that i want to rematch um, but I was scared because I'm like, it hasn't even been a month. So I went to drop off my host kids um, at school and everything. And when I came back, they're like, Prudence, we want to talk to you. Okay, fine. I sat down and I spoke to them. And they're like, we are leaving the program. I was like, oh, okay, fine. What happens to me? They're like, um, we want you out of our house by Friday. I was like, you want me out? Where am I supposed to go? And then my host mom was like, um, I don't know. You'll talk to the LCC, but we are leaving the program. We want you out of the house by Friday. I was like, okay, cool. Part of me was happy and excited because I really wanted this because I didn't see myself staying another um, six months with them people. I was really uncomfortable. Okay, fine. My LCC called me. He's like, Prudence, don't worry. You're going to come and stay with me. Guys, this is the best, best LCC that I've had. My LCC in Texas, I mean, I'm still even following her on Instagram and sometimes we do like talk and all of that. Like, I feel like, if my LCC was not, um, I'm not going to say her name, but if she was not my LCC and it was somebody else who didn't care, I don't know. I would have came back home very depressed because I felt like it was my fault. But my LCC sat me down and told me that, Prudence, it's not your fault. This lady is not satisfied with anything. She's not satisfied with anyone, literally. There was nothing that you were going to do that she would have been satisfied with. So so don't worry. Even the previous au pair only lasted five months. You only lasted four weeks. It's like, the problem is not with you. The problem is with them. And I'm even glad that they're leaving the program because they're just 
they were just making everything difficult for everybody even the whole license thing and everything you know it was just too much anyway so yeah got into a rematch my lcc was there for me guys it was the best thing even when i was worried thinking i'm the problem um i mean i'm not saying i'm innocent they probably you guys are listening to the story and thinking but prudence you could have done this different you know i'm not an angel um yeah and then i matched with the family in north carolina oh my gosh so um yeah Hey you guys, so I'm gonna try to like sum up everything quickly because I feel like this video is going to be very, very, very long. Um, but yeah, okay. I'm Ashford with the family in North Carolina. Um, this was nice. It was the best family, right? Me and my host mom was super, super, super close. Literally super close. Um, we would watch Netflix uh, series together, GOT, Game of... Like guys, it was... It was awesome my host kids like it was it just felt like i i was a part of the family it was very very nice right and then unfortunately um something happened between my host parents where they had to like separate and all of that and yeah that's you know guys this family was like the best family for me they were there for me even when my dad passed away during the program it was very like they were they were there for me the problem started, I know guys, there's always problems with me. <laughs> so after the separation, we moved to a different house and things were kind of different. Because um, kids had to go weekends, visit their dad, weekend, other weekends there with us. So like this work schedule changed a lot and I was not coping. I was very overwhelmed because it's something that i didn't really sign up for and i don't blame my host mom for it because i bet this was even hard for her guys like nobody wants to go through that in their marriage right so this one wasn't really a rematch because vele my it was me going into my second year and i just decided to go with a different family because a lot had changed i mean i'm still in contact with my host mom um, and the kids and all of that. And yeah, during the whole transition, um, kind of like other things happened. But it like what I feel like our relationship was so genuine that even we were able to move past that, ask forgiveness and just because we did say things that were hurtful when I was like transitioning. We um, yeah, but it was not like bad as the other rematches. This one was not even a rematch because I was just going into my second year, right? And I was just feeling very overwhelmed with the new schedule and everything that I, I didn't really want to stay anymore, right? And it was nobody's fault. It was really nobody's fault. But I love my baby so much. The other day I got a video from my previous host kid. Oh, it was so, so cute, you guys. So yeah. Um, and then for my second year, uh, I went to San Francisco, California. This was the best, 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 <laughs> best time of my au pair life. That was the best. Family was great. Like everything was, it was great, you guys. It was great. I got to travel. I got to do a lot. I had a close relationship with my host mom, with my host dad. My host mom and I had wine nights. Friday nights were like wine days. Like it was the best. So I can say that the last two families that I had were my rainbow families. Like that's when I actually got to enjoy the au pair program. Right. Um, and I can say that in the, the first two families, I was still new to the program. I didn't know what was going on. So when I met my rainbow families, I was, I can say I had adjusted to what the program was and what is going on. So yeah, you guys, that was my experience. I hope I gave you guys enough information. Um, but yeah, just to answer a couple of questions. There was a question where somebody asked me if you can fail uh, or if you if it's possible. I can't remember the question exactly. If it's possible to not if it's possible to not get your visa. Yes, it is possible for you to not get your visa, but do not worry if you're with cultural care, they will guide you and everything about that. 
um i can't remember all the other questions now but thank you so much for you guys for watching and if you are an au pair about to go to the u.s i wish you all the best it's a roller coaster sometimes but sometimes at the same time it's great i wouldn't have done anything different i promise you and yeah you guys um as people we are not perfect even in all these things that i mentioned i m might have contributed to some reactions and all of that so that is my story you guys um thank you so much <laughs> guys please do not forget to give this video a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell please comment too <laughs> all right you guys bye